Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. Welcome to Knife AQ number 55, the knife series where I answer all your questions, whether they're sharp or dull. And this week, we're talking about one of the great unifying forces in the knife world, Swiss Army Knives. Let's get into it. Ta-da! All right, put the housekeeping right up front as always. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions to this series. For those of you new to this series, we basically go through our comments section and pull some of the, uh, the best questions out of there to answer. So if you want a chance to have one of your questions featured, that's all you have to do. Just leave it in the comments down below. Uh, but as alluded to earlier, we're kind of celebrating the biggest knife maker in the world, let's be honest, biggest EDC knife maker anyway, outside of maybe some kitchen knife makers. That's Victorinox and their ubiquitous Swiss Army knives, something that everybody should have, every knife nut and every non-knife person too. Um, so this was really fun to put together. First question comes from DG Unearthed. Uh, why is it that people seem to gravitate so much towards single blade unitaskers instead of the Swiss Army knives? As a practical EDC, especially with the new fire starting products you can purchase for the Swiss Army knives, seems like a no brainer. Just wanted to know your take prior to my purchasing a Swiss Army knife. Uh, you should absolutely purchase a Swiss Army knife. I honestly, um, between the unitasker and the, uh, the multitasker, I mean, I'm an Alton Brown fan, so I'm not normally a, a unitasker guy, but I carry both every single day. Uh, my trusty Swiss Army knife is this Evo Grip S18. It's been on my, uh, on my belt for quite a long time at this point. I'm not sure actually when I switched over to uh, this Victorinox version because the, um, this used to be a Wenger model and Wenger and Victorinox were separate companies uh, until Victorinox bought them, kept it going for a while, but then eventually they folded them together and integrated the lines. The reason I wound up upgrading from the Wenger model is because I could get some fire starting accessories right there. Um, there are some new fire starting accessories out there though, direct from Victorinox, which uh, we'll talk about in a little bit. The reason I carry both is a Swiss Army knife is way too useful not to have around. It just is. It's not a heavy duty tool. It's not gonna replace everything in your toolbox, but for some light duty uses, some stuff where you know, you're not gonna have your toolbox with you, this is gonna get the job done pretty nicely. But when it comes to the blades themselves on Swiss Army knives, there's a lot of things you can get in the unitasker world that you can't get in the, uh, the Swiss Army knife world. world. Um, more premium steels for one matter. You can get stuff that has an edge that lasts a lot longer and you just have more choice in general, not just in material, but blade shape, thickness, all that sort of thing. I'll, uh, I'll hold up this guy right here. This is a new knife from Case. This is the Marilla. Case being, of course, a very famous maker of slip joint knives, not the, uh, the modern flippers, but even they are now catering to that market because there's a lot of utility there. But like I mentioned, choice on the blade itself. You've got more thickness on this Marilla and S35 VN steel. It's going to have a much longer lasting edge and you'll be able to kind of push it a little harder than the thinner blades on the Swiss Army knives, which slice very well, but they're not exactly heavy duty. You can back that up with a locking mechanism. Very few Swiss Army knives have locking mechanisms. Some do, my EDC actually does but they are a little harder to use quickly. And that's another area where the modern unitaskers have the advantage in terms of speed, both in terms of accessing the blade when you have a flipper like this and closing it, unlocking it from the frame lock here on this particular guy. You can also get pocket clips on these guys. Again, not something you see on too many Swiss Army knives. And I think beyond that, comfort. Um, you can get a bigger knife, something with a more robust handle. And even Victorinox caters to that with something like their Hunter Pro series right here. In addition to a much more easier to operate lock and a more robust blade here, you get very thick, very ergonomically designed handle, something that's gonna fill the hand a bit more and be more comfortable during hard use. A bit more protection both from that lock and from the finger guard here. So there's just a lot of different things that you know the unitasker world can offer that you just can't get from the Swiss Army Knife world. Now you may be thinking it's a little bit odd that I'm starting a FAQ video designed to highlight Swiss Army Knives by talking about all the things they can't do. 
Um, it's just what they are <laughs> at this point. Um, I love a Swiss Army knife. They, they serve an indispensable role in my EDC, but it's a part of a greater whole that just works really well for me. But those are a few reasons why, uh, why some folks might carry one over the other, or in my case, both. All right, next question comes from Matt Harvey. Uh, hey DCA, which knife is your favorite knife to gift for knife, for knife people versus non-knife people? Um, it's a bit hard to buy gifts for knife people unless you have a really good knowledge of what they like or dislike, what they already have in their collection, all kinds of things. It's gonna be very hard to know. And that goes for any kind of enthusiast niche. Um, you know, my, my brother-in-law is really big into mountain biking. I'm not gonna buy him an accessory for his mountain bike because I don't know if it's any good in terms of the way he evaluates things, if it duplicates something he already has, or if he doesn't even need something like that. So for knife people, a gift for knife people, knife center gift card. Yeah. That's probably the way to go because they can buy what they like. Um, for instance, I had a, a friend, uh, or through the grapevine, I, I heard a friend was uh, asking, hey, would David like a credit card knife? One of those like folding guys? And it's like, yeah, me, probably not. But from the outside looking in, it is so hard to judge any enthusiast circle and pick well. For non-knife people, Swiss Army knives are far and away the go-to. And there, there are two different ways I like to recommend uh, first. Uh, if you want just a, uh, a standard sized Swiss Army knife, the Tinker series is a great place to start. The standard Tinker comes with a pair of blades, which is quite nice. You also get the classic and de rigueur bottle opener, sorry, bottle opener here at the bottom with a screwdriver tip and the uh, can opener here at the top with a smaller screwdriver tip as well. Upgrade to the Super Tinker and you get a pair of scissors. Upgrade to the Deluxe Tinker, you also get a set of pliers on there. So really good for most folks who you know are just general purpose uh, users. Uh, you also have on the back of this Deluxe Tinker, you've got the parcel hook, which you have to find some inventive uses for that nowadays, but there are plenty out there. A nice awl and Phillips screwdriver as well, which is quite handy. And they're pretty affordable too. I mean, the standard Tinker starts at about 24 bucks and then each step up obviously goes up a, a little bit higher. Uh, the other one that's a great place to look is the Classic SD series, which is kind of the quintessential keychain sized Swiss Army knife. I've got three right here. And the reason these are great is because they're very easy to carry. Just pop it on your keychain if you want to carry it that way. And you get a couple of tools. You got your blade, you got your scissors, you've got a nail file, which also has a screwdriver tip. And the toothpick and tweezers, of course, as well. I didn't mention that on the, uh, the Tinker, you do get that. And there are choices when it comes to the Classic SD series. Right now, on our website, we have 85 different variations, which means you can find one that's gonna suit the personality of the person you're giving it to. This one right here is, has one of the uh, translucent scales, the translucent green. Uh, price on this particular one, uh, about 17 bucks, which is what they usually start at. You can get a fancier version, which comes with the Alox scales. We haven't talked about this. Uh, the standard red scales, the kind of classic Swiss Army knife look, they call that Celador. It's essentially a plastic. The Alox is an aluminum material and it's a little bit slimmer. You don't get a, a toothpick and tweezers in there because of the way they build these, but they are more sturdy. And this particular one is limited, limited edition orange for 2021. This is about 40 bucks plenty of different colors to choose from here as well. And then you have their graphic series, which they kind of rotate through uh, over the years. Each year they'll come out with some new options, but if someone's into one of those hobbyist niches that you may not have a good read on, like climbing, this particular guy right here, about 21 bucks, uh, this is one of the 2020 models, has some climbing graphics on it. Another great way to really show your appreciation and show you really know the person as well, because you're Again, able to pick out just the right one for the person you're gifting to. All right, thank you. Uh, next question comes from Eric Taylor. Uh, I'm teaching wilderness survival for the Boy Scouts. That was my favorite merit badge, by the way. Speak for yourself, I like air conditioning. I do too, which is why I don't go camping in the summer typically. I, I have to say there were two merit badges I took twice and wilderness survival was one of them. 
not because I needed to pass it again, but because we got to go out and, and camp overnight in a primitive shelter. And I really enjoyed that. Um, but anyway, back to our question. Uh, I'm teaching wilderness survival for the Boy Scouts. Uh, as always, the best knife in a survival situation is the one you have on you, of course. But I would rather teach the motto, be prepared. I would love a few fixed blade and folder combos that work well together in the outdoors teaching survival. These are scouts, so affordable options are appreciated with a combo under $200. Thank you. I love this question. I had a lot of, I, and I knew exactly the answer like right away. Um, first off, I think $200 is a bit ambitious. That's not exactly affordable. I think for most people, um, thinking back to my time in the scouts, especially some of the families, you know, are more strapped for cash in that program than others. They're not going to be able to throw $200 at a pair of items. So. I'm gonna scale this way back, make it much more affordable. Uh, still a little bit of money, but not a lot. Um, and what you want is a Swiss Army knife and a Mora. Affordable, lightweight, so they'll be able to take it You know, hiking if you go on a hiking trip with this stuff. And if they break, not the end of the world either. Um, as far as the Swiss Army knife to pick, uh, there's a few favorites of kind of outdoors folks out there. The Farmer series with the Alox handles, again, thanks to their more uh, rugged construction, is a favorite. Uh, the One Hand Trekker is also a favorite, but I think both of those might be a little more specialized. You have to know more about what you're doing to use a farmer to the full extent, I would say, and they're a little more expensive, like I said, and you know, this, this is not the one hand trekker, but this is the same. Uh, it shares the frame with this particular knife might be a little big for the task at hand. Uh, so the one I want to recommend here is if I can pull it up here, uh, the Huntsman really great model comes in at 38 bucks. So not too bad. And you can get it first of all, in a few different colors, but I picked the translucent blue here because blue is a great color to carry in the outdoors. Even more than orange in certain situations, blue can actually be easier to see in the wild because a bright, vibrant blue like this is actually pretty rare in nature. Uh, so good thing to keep in mind when picking other gear as well. But this has a great set of tools for the outdoors user. Again, kind of like the Tinker from earlier, you get a pair of blades. You get larger one that can be used for general purpose, maybe a little bit of food prep. Smaller one is great for detail work, great for whittling, which is a great Boy Scouts pastime. Beyond that, any outdoor Swiss Army knife, you're gonna want a saw. They do a really good job with these pocket saws. They are sharp, they cut really well for their size. Definitely essential. Beyond that, you get a nice pair of scissors. Great for all sorts of things, sorts of projects, other merit badges. And you get your cap lifter and your bottle opener. Or, why do I always do that? I don't know. Cap lifter, bottle opener, and can opener. Canned goods and Boy Scouts, I know I opened a lot of cans with one of these. Even though that's less of a thing now, a lot, of, a lot of things have pull tabs. On the back, you have that parcel hook. You also have an awl, great for leatherworking and other craft projects in Boy Scouts. Great for a nice crisp edge you can use to strike fire steels and that sort of thing. Speaking of which, you've also got the screw, or sorry, the uh, corkscrew on the back, which I'm not advocating uh, your, your Boy Scout aged kids go opening bottles of wine with these. But they're great for uh, for untying knots, especially in like tight paracord. But also some of those fire starting things I mentioned earlier. Uh, this is uh, two of the pieces from the kit you can get from Victorinox right now. The Fire Ant set comes with three rods and six pieces of tinder, which is what uh, this is right here. And this strikes just like a, a ferro rod essentially. And because of the twist pattern they put on these, they can actually live inside that corkscrew. So you've got added functionality there without taking up added space anywhere else. Let me fold that in so it doesn't pop out so much. There you go. Nice vibrant colors look pretty good on this as well. It's really good to have those on hand just in case you need it, quite honestly. And then of course, toothpick and tweezers. Uh, the tweezers on the Swiss Army knives aren't like the most heavy duty on there, but they can be used in a pinch for things like, you know, tick removal, that sort of thing. Um, good backup set anyway, for, for that sort of thing. Uh, with that, like I said, you want to pair that with a Mora and I'm a big fan, um, for younger folks, especially the pro series, either the pro C or pro S C for carbon S for stainless. This is the pro C right here. 
Some may lean uh, and say, you know, get a stainless knife for the Boy Scout. They might not be taking as good a care of it uh, at that age. I kind of think the carbon is, is a teaching tool to help them realize they need to take care of some things a certain way. And very affordable, 13 bucks for this guy right now. Uh, the reason I like this over something like the Companion or, or over some of the other models are a few key specs. One, blade length is just under four inches, uh, actually about three and five eighths. Uh, so it's under a key, you know, a key mark for certain areas in terms of blade length. Very easy to uh, make that work anywhere. And you also have a very aggressive finger guard right here. I think that's definitely important for a survival scenario, but also very important for folks who may not be as versed with the tool. It's just a little bit of added safety. Plus, because it comes up straight perpendicular or uh, yeah, perpendicular to the edge, it's a little easier to sharpen than something like the Companion, which has an angled handle. On that note about sharpening, you've got two different grinds here between these two knives. So you'll be able to teach a couple of different skills. Uh, the Scandi is of course regarded as being pretty easy to sharpen because you can lay your flat bevel of the edge right on the stone. Whereas the Swiss Army knife is gonna have a, what, you know, what we consider anyway, a more conventional grind with the, uh, a flat profile and a secondary bevel. And rather than something like a super steel that's gonna have an edge that lasts a long time but then is really hard to sharpen, the softer, simple stainless that Swiss Arm, that Victorinox uses on these knives is gonna be a much better teaching tool to get those scouts to learn how to sharpen effectively because it's not gonna be difficult to do with this particular steel. But these work exceptionally well. They're quite tough. I prefer this over like the more robust, which is the same shape but with a thicker blade because this has a Scandi grind, which is not the sliciest grind in the world. Works great for wood carving and stuff out where you might need to be quote unquote surviving. Uh, but it's also thin enough, you could still do some like food prep stuff with it if you needed to. Really, really solid thing here. Uh, sheath, also lightweight, the whole package, very light. Uh, comes in, I think, uh, well the knife itself is 2.9 ounces and the sheath does not add much. It's got a good clip here with a hook on the uh, underside to keep it from sliding off. And these two together, before like tax and shipping or anything else, 51 bucks. Lot you can do with this, like I said, versatile beyond just the, uh, the wilderness survival merit badge. Solid, solid set right there. I did wanna mention one more, um, a slightly more expensive Mora, and that's the Cansbowl. Uh, they started about $34 for the standard version, but this version right here for about 53 bucks, if the, uh, the kid does have a little bit more money to spend, also a good option thanks to the added stuff that comes with it. These are brand new right now. You've got a survival kit on the outside of the sheath that comes with a full size fire steel and it also comes with a diamond sharpener here on the side. Really nice and the knife itself, very nice too. You don't get as much of a finger guard. There's a little bit there and the blade length is over four inches. So again, keep that in mind before you uh, decide to go this particular direction but another great knife. You've got that Scandi grind thin enough where it can slice, scalloped here at the front so the belly section is even better at the slicing, and crisp spine on this particular knife, which you don't get on the, uh, the Pro C. Now that's very popular with bushcrafters because you can strike a fire steel with the spine. A Little bit of a more advanced technique there too. It's not something I would necessarily recommend for every Boy Scout out there, which is why I don't think it's you know that big of a deal breaker that the Pro C does not have that particular feature. Um, but again, something for you to keep in mind. Uh, really fun question. I, I really enjoyed that and I really believe in that combo right there. I think it's gonna be great. 51 bucks, uh, a few more if you wanna get the, uh, the fire starter capability and uh, to uh, carry it along with Really, really solid. All right, For This Land asks, why don't more companies make Swiss Army knife style knives? Are they, they are really all the average Joe needs. Um, kind of talked about the, uh, the needs there right at our first question. Um, but to the first part of your question, why don't more companies make them? It's because Victorinox utterly dominates the landscape. I mean, they are like, Everybody knows about Swiss Army knives, whether you're a knife fan or not. So for another knife, more niche knife company to kind of compete with, by volume, the largest pocket knife maker in the world, it's gonna take a lot to get there. 
There are a few uh, that make some alternatives. We actually did a uh, standalone video on this. We'll point you to that. But a couple of my favorites that you can get would be the MKM Malga series right here. Some cool upgrades that help it stand apart. They're trying to do a little bit of their own thing. Micarta handles for one, very cool. And those handles are removable if you wanted to mod them or make your own handle scales for these. You also have an M390 blade here, which offers a whole lot more edge retention than the typical Swiss Army stainless. Um, really cool knives, um, not a ton of, uh, of tool options right now. There's only the Malga 6, but I wouldn't be surprised to see more from them in the future. Uh, the other one I really like is Boker's uh, Tech Tool series. Uh, they've got full sizes over here, which even come with a pocket clip, which is quite nice. But I think my favorite one is the Mini Tech Tool 4. Smaller in size, about 30 bucks. You've got a very attractive blade profile here, 12C27 stainless, really good stuff. You get a pair of scissors, and you also get a rather innovative looking single piece tool right here that integrates a few functions. You got bottle opener, flathead screwdriver, and even a small parcel hook, or not a parcel hook like the Swiss Army knives, more like a, a package opening hook. You've got that sharpened edge right, hit right there. Really good for opening stuff like clam packs, the, that aggressive plastic packaging where especially a non-locking blade can kind of slip around. You might worry about it closing on you. Use this guy, you can pull through those things quite nicely. G10 handles, so a few nice little nicer things than you might get from some of the Swiss Army Knife options out there. All right, now we come to the lightning round for today. Uh, Stevie B asks, all I want from a SAK is a blade, a flat and Phillips screwdriver, and for it to be super thin, why doesn't that exist? I'd say primarily because that Phillips driver is pretty big. Uh, what you ought to look at is the cadet. You get your blade and you get the can opener and cap lifter. The tip of that can opener in a pinch can actually work on some Phillips screws. You just get you know, essentially a 2D driver rather than the, uh, the 3D driver right there. Is it going to perfectly replace a full 3D Phillips driver? No, but if you're uh, really prioritizing that slim nature, this is gonna get you by in a fair number of scenarios anyway, and it's gonna look great doing it too. Very classy cadet. All right, next question comes from Jacob Olness. Uh, if only there were mildly upgraded blades available for the SAK. I'd be happy with 154CM even, still one of my favorites. Um, the thing to look for, you don't see much of them, look for the limited edition Damasteel bladed models. Uh, those Damasteel blades are a powder metallurgy product from Damasteel, and part of the base metals of that product is RWL34, which is a powder metal version of ATS34, which is a Japanese version of 154CM. So it actually- That's quite the family tree there. It kind of works out in that regard. Um, obviously it's not a regular line item and they are typically more expensive, um, but say la vie. Uh, Jeremy Two, it's that guy again, asks, what is the most overlooked Swiss Army knives? I'd have to go with the Outrider. Um, shares the frame with the one hand trekker, but I think because it's not one hand opening, it tends to get overlooked a little bit. This is actually my preferred Swiss Army knife when I personally go out into the outdoors. You got that nice big long blade, nice locking mechanism as well. Even though my one old one has the, uh, the slide lock on the side, really great uh, set of tools here. You get a scissors and a Phillips screwdriver in this that you don't get on the other guys. And also when using the, uh, the tools besides the blade without the hump sticking out here from the one hand opening, I, feel, I find it a little bit more comfortable. Really solid and I'll definitely be uh, kind of beating the drum for that whenever anyone asks. Really good tool. All right, Webb Richburg says, I got one for you, DCA. Uh, I want a new Victorinox, but I want to keep as slim or thin of a handle as possible. Required tools are at least one plain edge blade, a nail file, and scissors. The Classic SD, right here, uh, has all the tools I want, but the size is just too small. So what's your recommendation? Bonus points if you mention your slightly larger than average hands three times while discussing your answer to my question. Um, this sounds like the Super Troopers game, the Meow game. Um, anyway, somehow I think the money clip is not what you're looking for, even though it has 
you know, slightly larger than average tools compared to the compact there, at least the blade itself and the scissors are a little bit larger and you get the nail file too. Um, again, I don't think that's quite what you're looking for. And these are actually, I think discontinued. Uh, I personally went down this same rabbit hole and the compact is what you want. It's a full size Swiss army knife. So slightly larger than average. Slightly larger. I don't worry. I, I'm embarrassed too, guys. It's fine. Uh, two layers thick. You have on the front side, the blade slightly larger than average scissors compared to the other ones we've looked at so far. And then on the back, the parcel hook on this particular model has a piece of nail file there at the back. It's not the standalone tool. Most parcel hooks in the lineup don't come with this feature, but this one does pretty cool. You've also got the plus scales, which means pull it from the right section, you got a little ballpoint pen and a pin in there as well. And a small eyeglass screwdriver, a lot of capability in a slim frame. Uh, Cause besides that, the, uh, the next slimmest one is one of these Evo grip series, uh, the CX four or sorry, the Evo grip 14, which thanks to those grippy scales does get a little bit wider. Victorinox compact. Last question. Our most serious question of the day comes from biggest man. Most serious question of the day candidate. A friend of mine is a moyle. Any suggestions on a good knife for that type of work? It's gotta be this guy right here. The cigar 36 multi-tool 32 bucks. Your moyle friend probably appreciate this. Yikes. Anyway, that is all the time we have for today. Thank you everyone as always for your questions. And if you want a chance to have one of your questions featured, talk about it at the, at the top, leave them in the comments section below. If you want to get your hands on any of these guys, we'll leave links in the description as always to take you over to knifecenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our knife rewards program so you can earn some free money to spend on your next knife when you buy one of these knives today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.